Hi, welcome to the second lecture in Module 1 of our Smart Systems course. Today we're going to be talking about simulating dynamic systems in Collimator. Collimator is a lot like Simulink, but it's geared toward Python users. So today we're going to talk about um, how do you create a model of a real physical system, and we're going to describe that system using a really simple differential equation. So specifically, we're going to take a look at this very simple system of a tank. So tank will just looks like this. We are going to want to track the volume or the level in this tank. So let's assume that we have flow coming into our tank. Let's just call that Q in. So this would be something we're going to give it units of cubic meters per minute. And then we're going to have flow coming out which is going to have those same kind of units. So inside the tank we're going to have a certain volume and we're going to want to be tracking how that volume changes with time. So the volume is going to have units of cubic meters and then this dvdt is going to have the same units as our flow rates of cubic meters per minute. So this model can be described by a pretty simple differential equation that we can be derive by doing a volume balance. So if we're assuming that the fluid has constant density, so we have whatever's flowing in has the same density as what is in our tank, and then that's the same density as what is leaving, then our volume balance becomes equivalent to a uh, mass balance, and we would have an accumulation term. So the change in the volume in our tank is just equal to our what's coming in minus what's going out. So a very simple differential equation, and I just want to use this to highlight Collimator's ability to simulate differential equation systems like that. So this is simple, but Collimator has the ability to simulate much more complex systems, which we will gradually work through over this course. So to get into Collimator, again, we open a web browser, um, Go to collimator.ai, go to this try for free button. If you already have an account, there's a sign in button. I'm, al I'm already signed in. I'm just going to go into this existing project that's called Smart Systems, and I'm going to look at, I'm going to create a new model, and I'm just going to call this one Lecture 2. Alright, so first I want to create a custom block that contains this differential equation that we just looked at. So call me. Collimator makes it really easy to have a Python script. So I just I search for a Python script from my block library. I drag and drop this Python script over. I'm going to left click on it so it's highlighted. And then I'm going to go over here and give this a name. So I'm just going to call this tank. All right, my tank, um, I want it to have an input of QN. And Remember, we're talking about mathematical inputs to our model, and we're not talking about necessarily inputs into the tank. So I, another input is actually Q out. So this is basically I need to give my model the flow rate of material coming into this tank and then the flow rate of material going out of this tank. And then my output, I'm going to program my differential equation in there directly. So my output, I'm going to want it to be this dvdt. So notice that as I added these inputs, it automatically created a separate input port on my block, and it has this output port here. It can be useful. I'm going to um, make this a little bit bigger. One thing that you can do is right-click on your block, and you can go to Toggle Port Labels, and that gives you these labels so you know which signal goes where. All right, so this is what my script looks like from the outside. If I double click on it now, this takes me into a simple Python script. So you can have, um, here you can have an initialization script if there's something I need to preload. If you're using tools like NumPy, here you can do like an import NumPy command. We actually shouldn't need that here. I just need to go up to this step line of code. By default, it's just saying, my out is equal to my in, my output is equal to my input, but remember we created these custom variable names here, so we're going to want to use these. So within our code, we're going to want to make sure that we define 
this output somehow and we're going to want to be using these inputs. So this is really quite simple. I just say dv dt is equal to q in minus q out. Just as simple as that. This is the only code that we need to define this model. Um, I, I'm just going to go back here now, back to my overall model file. So again, my code is still there if I click back into it. So now what we need to do is we need to define the inputs here. So I'm going to go over to my model library and I'm going to look for a couple of step functions, these source blocks. So I'm going to call this step function. I'm going to go ahead and call this one QN. And that helps me kind of match these signal names. And I'm going to do a control C here to copy and a control V to paste that gives me this other input block and I'm going to call this one Q out. Alright, I connect these blocks by left clicking. I connect this signal from my step function to my differential equation model that I just created for both of these input signals. There's actually something here no, I think we're good actually. Okay, so what we want to do now is this gives us the change in volume with time, dv dt. That's what our function, it's an algebraic function that computes the differential um, as an explicit function of our input variables here. So I want to be able to integrate that in so that I get the integral of dv dt equals v or my volume. So I'm going to go grab another block here called an integrator. And I'm going to connect this dv dt to my integrator. I'm going to call this integrator v because its output is going to be my tank volume. So what happens is when you're continuously feeding this dv dt signal here into this v block, this v block, this integrator is going to integrate this over time. So this gives us an initial state here. So this is my where I put my initial condition. Let's say that my initial condition, I've got 10 cubic meters of material in my tank. And we didn't actually define these step functions. I'm going to start out with an input flow of, let's say, 5. And let's, just, let's end with 5 as well. So we're talking about meters cubed per minute. So this. I don't really need a step function to do this since I'm not taking an actual step here. Um, and then my outflow. So what I want to do is I want to let the tank fill up for a while and then I want to simulate opening this outflow valve. So I'm going to start out with no flow going out and then eventually I'm going to want to have let's say 5 meters per minute going out and I want to make that step change at let's say 10 minutes. So we should be able to simulate our system now. Um, I'm going to change my time here. So here's my end time 10 minutes. Let's, let's just simulate this for an hour, 60 minutes and see what happens. I'm going to want to be able to visualize my signals and how these things change. So I'm going to left click on all of these blocks so that it tells Collimator I want to see the visual output of these blocks. I go in here and click run. The model compiles and then quickly simulates. It's a very simple model. So now it's going to be loading in our data so that we can view it. So QN again is a constant. And if you recall, we are we're putting fluid into our tank at this rate of 5 cubic meters per minute. And at the beginning, we're not letting our tank drain. Then at 10 minutes, we are suddenly opening this valve and outputting a flow of five, meters per, five cubic meters per minute. So what we should see is that our tank gradually builds up in volume and then it flattens out because our inflow equals our outflow. So let's go see if that is the case. Here is the output from our tank model. So that's just giving us this output here, I believe or our dv dt. So you can see that our change in volume over time is positive, which means the tank is filling, and then it goes to zero. 
and then when we look at our integrated signal we see that the tank gradually fills up and then you'd start letting it flow out and the tank volume levels off. So you can do all kinds of good simulations here. Uh, so one thing we can do is we can look at these two flow rates on the same chart. So I'll do that and um, let's now let's have our tank gradually drain. Let's have it fill up first and then drain. So if I give this an end value that's something higher than five, let's say we give it an end value of six. So now our um, our outflow is going to be greater than our inflow, which means we should see the tank gradually drain over time. We will rerun the simulation. So now you see our two different inputs on the same plot. Again, now our, our derivative of volume with respect to time first is positive and then it goes negative rather than staying at zero. And we certainly see the tank volume increase and then we open up the outflow, the tank volume gradually starts to decrease. So a collimator is really nice for doing this kind of stuff. We can certainly have a bunch of different types of inputs here, um, like a pulse. Let's look at what a pulse looks like. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this cue out. And I'm going to find a pulse here. So this pulse signal, we can give it a certain amplitude. I want this to go in a period of 10 minutes. And I want it to have an amplitude of, let's say, five and a pulse width of 50% of the period. And our tank volume may actually go negative here at the beginning, depending on where this pulse starts. Okay, so here we see our inflow and, and our volume. Um, yeah, it's kind of, it, <laughs> it's, first it is gradually increasing, then it increases a little bit faster as we, um, turn off the outflow. So you can just see you can do a lot of different scenarios here using a pretty simple differential equation model. So stay tuned for the next video. We're going to start to develop more and more complex models and just show you the power of working with Collimator.